Hello everybody, it's Wyvern here with another bit of Total War Worm 2 Koi Command gameplay. This time around we are in Maruka Isles, playing as the Wood Elves against the High Elves. And uh, this is a match that's kind of tough for the Wood Elves, it's probably one of the worst, if not the worst matchup they have. Uh, I would argue that in some ways, at least in Quick Match, it's a worse matchup than uh, Dwarves. Because uh, there's some strat really nasty strats the High Elves can bring for you against you. So. I decided to try something a little different today, and uh, I decided to give up my magic, in fact, entirely, and to make room for two Waystalkers and a Glady. And uh, I know, uh, generally, the sort of general consensus is that you should always try to bring a caster, but I think there are special cases when you could try to make a build work without one. So, quickly, let's go over the comp. For my lord, I decided to bring a Glady. She's mounted on a horse to give her good mobility, but to keep her cheap. Um, she does have Prey of Anathrema, as well as Air of Kernis, so... Looking to get some poke damage, she of course does very good damage per shot, um, and she also has piercing shots, so the cool things potentially is if your opponent has things like, say, Swordmaster of Hoeth, or if he's got, say, even Dragon Princes, you can potentially pick off multiple models with a single shot if you get lucky, I do believe. Uh, it might not work for Cav, I, I know it works for Infantry, but uh, I do believe it uh, works for Cav as well, as long as you can overkill a unit with the damage. For the rest of the comp, well, we've got two Waystalkers up here in the front, and one of them does have the AoE damage buff. Uh, normally I say this is a pretty garbage of ability to bring uh, to the table, but, uh, you know, the uh, Eye of Kernis plus 10% damage does mean that these guys are getting a slight bump up, uh, about 15 more AP damage and a couple dozen more uh, non-AP, which is really good. So you get two Waystalkers here, same arrows, uh, same homing ability as the Glady. And uh, potentially we could snipe down lords, we could snipe down heroes, and we can whittle down cav and elite units very efficiently. We do have four units of deep wood scouts here in the front. I figured if my opponent went very archer heavy, or if my opponent went very heavy on uh, shadow warriors, shadow warriors incredibly potent in this matchup. But these guys would do really well against them, much better than say way watchers. And against dragon princes, which of course are a huge threat to this sort of comp, I've actually decided to go with very heavy AP infantry core. And uh, <laughs> we're going to be trying to combo nets with things like with war dancers and fire from waystalkers to put down something like a dragon princes or uh, the uh, Fireborn, it's like that. For frontline, a bunch of Eternal Guard, five units of them, one of which is the Winter Heart Guard, which are unbreakable and do provide Encourage, and uh, they've got, of course, uh, Expert Charge Defense. And then two units of Wardens with Azurite Spears, as well as the Loic Strictures here in the back, who can stalk and have a bonus melee attack. My opponent decided to go with an Infantry Box, essentially, a whole bunch of Spearmen, the Pure Main Company, as well as some White Lines. I, white Lines are actually really good in this matchup because they're mobile, they can fight well in woods, and although the AP is kind of overkill, they do have built-in Missile Resist, which is really nifty. Two Loth and Seagard to shield in the back. These guys, of course, will tank really well. A single unit of Swordmasters, a single unit of Phoenix Guard to help bust through the front line. Personally, I don't think these are good units to bring in this matchup, but uh, you can certainly make them work. Uh, L'Oreal is over here on foot, in fact, with most, if not all, of her spells. Uh, you can see she does have the uh, Star of Avalorn, the Stave of Avalorn, Arcane Conduit, Arcane and Forging Tempest. She actually does have, she's missing Banishment, by the way. She does have Shield of Thorns, Earth Blood, all of that good stuff. Uh, her AOE physical resist, of course. So uh, definitely looking pretty pretty nasty. Of course, on foot, kind of a tough target. Then a noble over here, also on foot, with AOE uh, Sacred Incense, I do believe, which grants 12% additional uh, missile resist, which is pretty cool. It means these white lines are up to 42% missile resist. And on either flank, we do have Silver Helms with shields. And these guys are pretty potent. Uh, not the greatest cav ever, but they are pretty cheap, and they could definitely dumpster a wood elf calf because wild riders just don't have armor uh, they're not really built to tank that so you can see here they do get a little little cocky do push forward one of them does get shot down there by the bows in the meantime you can see the lady there picks off a model from the white lines although unfortunately it was right on the edge so she didn't get that piercing effect you can see over here the signs of mathlon do lose three models from the waystalker arrows lady picking off another two models so definitely getting some good value there with her overkilling arrows we were trying to get a little bit of a beat here on the Noble. You can see one of the shots is going in there with whiffs, and uh, as we do lose track of him. So shortly, we are going to start shifting target. You can see my Deep Wood Scouts moving backwards so that we don't get caught out and uh, start getting pounded by these Loth and Seaguard. In the meantime, my infantry line has pushed forward a tiny bit. They're going to sort of inch their way up, and you can see my opponent here dropping an Arcanon Forging on the Glady, which I don't really think is worth it. Uh, sure, you're going to increase my cooldown. Sure, it's like a Spirit Leech, and I don't have any heals, but I just don't think it's that valuable. And nonetheless, the signs of Mathlon are getting picked apart by the Waystalkers. Bit of a mistake there, really. I should have been saving my uh, ammo. But the Noble here, you can see he's already taking a pounding despite that built in missile resist boost he's got. Over here, the Waystalkers are going to start running, booking it from these angry white lines. Um, but yeah, the Glady over here. Or, you know, she gets beaten down, she loses a couple thousand HP, probably about 1,200 or so, but I'm still able to chip away at the Noble, whittle him down, and uh, although my opponent gets a little bit of hurt there on the Eternal Guard, it's really not too much, and uh, 
Sure, there's an Earth Blood going down, but we'll be able to keep chipping away and being a nuisance. And now we do shift target onto the Phoenix Guard. You can see these guys up to seven kills, seven kills each. And we're going to be able to start focusing some units. You can see the uh, we're going to focus the Swordmasters there as well. These guys are pretty tanky. You see 90 armor, 20% uh, shield. It's not a full normal bronze, but still ridiculously shielded. We're able to start chipping away, and you can see these Phoenix are already down by multiple miles, by like 18 miles there, just because of the, those piercing shots from the Waystalkers. Another volley going in, taking them down four more miles. The Waystalkers, huge paying for their dues here. These guys are pretty cheap. They're like a little over 800, I think. Uh, but shortly, we're going to change target. You can see we're going to fire a volley of the air, the uh, Arrows of Kurnus there into the Lothan Sea Guard in this bit of a back and forth. I was trying to keep away, keep my shielded units in the back. I wanted to avoid this frontline engagement as long as I could. But now the Depot Scouts are going to start trading into Loth and Seaguard, figuring that, you know, I'm going to have to fight them straight up. I can't deal with this Cav. Uh, I can't be trying to flank with my Depot Scouts. We're just going to have to take on these guys head on. In the meantime, my opponent here is going to start pushing forward. He's going to start engaging in the front line, doing rather well. But we are overwhelming the Loth and Seaguard for sure. In the meantime, the Phoenix Guard here, they do get a round on the flank. But... Unfortunately for my opponent, now he did push Alariel into the fray, but she's going to start taking an absolute beating from the Waystalker. And the Waystalkers don't really care about all her resistances or profiles protection and all that stuff. They're going to start chipping away, and you can see the homing arrows just knocking her down by about 400, 400 to 500 HP a shot. In the meantime, the Glady here chipping away at the Phoenix Guard, not in the ideal angle to get great kills, but still doing ridiculous amounts of work. And we still do have a very strong backline. Do keep in mind that this Eternal Guard will shortly, once I notice them, be able to start pushing forward. And we still do have all these Ord Answers as our Spears are able to zone away the uh, Silver Helms. So we've got that unit of Silver Helms over there. Over here we've got a unit of Silver Helms as well, which the Glady is moving on an intercept course. So she's going to be able to push in against them. Uh, whittling them down, you can see now we hit them with a Prey of Anathrema. Deepwood Scout's not really meant to kill Cav like this, but... You know, they'll do. They'll, they'll, they'll do. You'll do, pig. Um, and they're going to be able to really break these guys down. With the Azurite Spears, I pop Woven Mist to protect myself from my own friendly fire. And these guys are just going to get annihilated. Meantime, over here, the frontline fight going pretty disastrously, but we do pick apart Alariel with our Waystalker spam. So you can see these guys up to 53 and 39 kills. So showing just how powerful those bolt thrower type shots are, are at killing units. And now they're going to be able to shift fire now onto the Phoenix Guard and start killing them in droves. The big thing, of course, these guys are reliant on physical... Or, now, certainly they do have that armor, but they're very reliant on their physical resist to survive against missile fire. And uh, we bypass that with Waystalkers and magic shots. Now, unfortunately, the Boot Scouts here do get pressured, but we are going to be able to pull away uh, with the Glady and the Silver and the uh, War Dancers here, able to pressure off the Silver Helms, force them away from my Deep Boot Scouts. But my opponent will be able to route you know, the Deep Boot Scouts, but the rest of the band is going to be able to keep fleeing as the War Dancers now converge on this break. Well, over here in the back line, actually, my opponent's army is buckling. You can see we are whittling down the Swordmasters. If I can remove the Phoenix Guard and the Swordmasters from the field, Waystalkers actually have decent enough stats. Most of these units have decent enough stats to trade with these really badly beaten up Pyramid Company, Spearmen, that sort of stuff. Uh, you can see these guys up to 60 kills, 58 kills on these guys, just showing how ridiculous the kill count you can get is on those guys. The Eternal Guard here, we're going to break back in, going to go after the Lothan Sea Guard. We are slowly but surely pincering and collapsing those pockets. Uh, the Deepwood Scouts fight their way clear as the War Dancers dive in. Uh, the, those War Dancers over there doing some great work. These guys over here, Storm Blades up, so giving them 70 melee attack. This is such a ridiculous unit in certain situations with Frenzy, with a bonus, a bonus melee attack, they're up to 70 attack. Uh, certainly, even their melee defense is still at 37, which is not bad by any means. And they're able to just dice their way through these Swordmasters of Hoeth and collapse this pocket, which is just brutal. So this screaming lady is really angry, but uh, doing huge amounts of work very, very quickly. Uh, and my opponent's army at this point will suffer army losses. Uh, the Waystalker's still on a decent amount of ammo. You can see these guys on like 13 and 10. And uh, my opponent is, at this point, simply defeated. So pretty brutal game, and uh, one that went pretty one-sided. And I do want to say that my opponent's build there, um, not necessarily the most ideal composition, I would say. Definitely the uh, Phoenix Guard and Lord with Swordmaster are not necessarily what I would suggest. I would suggest bringing some more heavy cav, potentially. Even if you're trying to go for a uh, sort of more defensive build, you could try to cram in. Uh, I'd probably ditch the Noble, to be honest. Just bring a Lariel on a horse, and then try to get in two Dragon Princes instead of these units. But still, I did find the build to work surprisingly well. Um, had my opponent dumped these units, which he certainly could have, but on the flip side, you, got, you have to keep in mind that had he dumped those units, while well, he would have had a lot more cav, I would have also had more resources to cover my peripherals and my defend better against these war dancers and again with the war dancers and the low strictures i wouldn't have had to pull them in the front line wouldn't have collapsed as quickly without the help of units like sword masters uh in there the way stalkers huge payoff uh 61 58 78 on the uh lady as well just doing immense work between the arrows of kernis as well as their piercing shots just able to annihilate those elite troops and i'm not sold on them as being the ideal situation i do need to test them more against dragon princes because that is one of the biggest threats 
But I do think they have some great potential and uh, as a f very strong unit. Plus, they're very good at sniping lords like Teclas or Lariel down. Uh, it might be better to bring a tree man, try to use uh, Awakening of the Woods and that sort of stuff to slow your opponent down and prevent them from uh, getting to your back line, just give up the prey of Anathrema. But uh, and that way you do get some magic involved. But um, certainly it was a pretty fun build even without the magic. Uh, the, like I said, the mag losing magic does kind of suck, but uh, still uh, it worked out. And uh, you know, the Eternal Guard, well, they're Eternal Guard. They did okay. They were against units that were better than them for the most part. But the Eternal Guard trashes uh, Spearmen, in fact, in 1v1, despite not being that much more expensive. But uh, worse things like White Lions and Swordmasters and that sort of stuff, they just won't deliver. Uh, War Dancers as well, doing some crazy work between the, them. They got like over 100 kills, most of those against infantry, to be honest. A few against Silver Helms, but only about a half, less than half of that was probably against Silver Helms, so not bad. Deep Wood Scouts also, not, not necessarily the greatest kill counts, but they did focus some units down. I definitely think this build, if I was going to rework it a bit, uh, I might actually just ditch some of the Deep Wood Scouts, get some, perhaps try to work some ad different units in there. Um, Deep Wood Scouts are good against Shadow Warriors, that's the main selling point. Is that they're decent at tr out trading Shadow Warriors cost wise. But regardless, well played to Mayonitis here. Uh, like I said, I do think that you want to swap down those Phoenix Guard and Swordmasters, uh, and probably the Noble in exchange for two, two uh, Dragon Princes and a Lariel and a Horse. But otherwise, I think the build is reasonable uh, if this is the sort of comp you want to bring. Um, if you want to bring, I, I personally love my Shadow Warrior builds, but this can work too. So, uh, definitely not bad. Uh, I do hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you found it entertaining. Hope you hopefully found it informative. If you did, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. If you have any comments, any criticism, any questions, as usual, do not hesitate to post them. I will do my best to respond as soon as I can. I do thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Wyvern out.